How to build a righteous prayer altar. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some practical steps in how you can build a righteous prayer altar. To begin, we must understand what an altar is. Altars are established as a method or system for activating and maintaining covenant agreements. These agreements are either righteous or unrighteous. And what do I mean by that? There are individuals who build evil altars for the purpose of selfish gain, wealth, or power. To build an unrighteous altar is extremely dangerous. They can cause harm for the family bloodline for generations to come. But in this video, we will discuss how to build a righteous prayer altar. Whether you accept it or not, the spiritual world is as real as the physical world and even more so. Oftentimes, things are created in our imagination before they become real. The Bible itself provides numerous accounts of supernatural experiences. God himself is a spirit. John 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What is a prayer altar? A prayer altar is a spiritual altar established for the purpose of worshiping and strengthening one's covenant relationship with God. Prayer altars do not have that selfish ulterior motive that an evil altar or an unrighteous altar carries with it. Spiritual altars are used for the purpose of connecting with a deity for good or for evil. Altars in the Bible were often erected to God as a memorial or a place of communion. In Genesis 28 verse 10 through 21 is a story about Jacob and his experience in building a prayer altar. It says, now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 15. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, 
and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace. The Lord shall be my God. Jacob understood the power of a prayer altar. Unrighteous altars, on the other hand, are erected for evil and ungodly purposes. Unrighteous altars, when left unbroken, can wreak havoc in your bloodline for generations. What our ancestors have done in the past, whether we know about it or not, can affect us. And only through God and through awareness and through repentance and through prayer and through deliverance can we break evil altars. But when we build a prayer altar, establish a place for God to come and commune with us. God desires a covenant relationship that grants him access into our lives so that he can direct our path and release mysteries of things present and things to come. A prayer altar is a sacred space created in our homes and in some cases our vehicles help us focus our thoughts and intentions during prayer. Prayer altar can be as simple or as elaborate as we desire. Some tend to use music and candles create this unique atmosphere. My prayer altar Includes my Bible, journal, post-it notes, colorful markers, and a pen. Regardless of what you decide to put in your prayer altar, this is a dedicated space. Main thing that is important is you. Build this prayer altar. It's important that we designate a particular space and time which we can commune with God on a daily basis. Jesus often prayed in the wee hours of the morning. Prayer was his source of strength. Prayer was how he connected with God. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. In order to do this, he had to establish a prayer altar. In establishing a righteous prayer altar, be consistent. Consistency is what opens the portals of heaven. Prayer is what activates the atmosphere of heaven. It's important that we remember prayer is a two-way conversation. To be listening and waiting on God just as much as we pray. Prayer is the only activity that Christ tells us to do constantly. It's a discipline, a spiritual discipline that requires sacrifice and commitment. You should never be too busy to pray. Prayer is a spiritual activity that is very personal in Matthew 6 verse 6 says but when you pray this is not if this is when you pray go into your room this is a sacred place when you have shut your door that means it's very private pray to your father who is in the secret place this is a meeting place he's already there waiting for you and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Prayer altars establish a relationship with God where he hears what's on your heart. God rewards your faithfulness in building a prayer altar by rewarding your requests openly. Prayer altars are quite important. When it comes to building a prayer altar, Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It can be as simple as a chair where you sit and you meet with God every morning. It can be a prayer closet. It can be inside your vehicle. Or you can create and dedicate an entire room. It doesn't matter how or what a prayer altar looks like in particular because it's very personal to you and to God. It's a sacred place, a place where you and God will meet to discuss the day, to discuss your concerns, and where you will listen and wait on the Lord. I pray that this message blesses you. 
If it did, be sure to like and share it with someone else. Be blessed.